Right, so there's a movement in the Presidential Records Act case, the Classified Documents case. This is the case in Florida. Jack Smith, President Trump, the raid on Mar-a-Lago, the, the documents. Are they his? Are they classified? Were they declassified before? President? How does the Presidential Records Act come into play? Um, again, the, the president's power to declassify on their own without a for, without it going through a formal process. All these legal issues and whether or not the court even wants to uh, long term, whether a court will even want to determine those bigger questions, because uh, you could see a case like that, even on an issue like that, going to the Supreme Court on just the issue whether or not a court is going to determine what a uh, law, a system that was set up for the president to benefit the president, so that they could have classified information, but also at any moment declassify it for anyone. You don't have to have like, the president doesn't have to worry about your security clearance to have to tell you if they want to information that is he go on tv and start reading uh, classified information so it's a the question is if you don't document it somehow then do you, are you just able to say well i declassified this yeah th- i think those rules have been and, a little and that's, blurry that's what's blurry here now what happened in this court filing to all depend on kind of like what news channel you watch and one issue a motion to dismiss from president trump was denied but but it was denied because it, the the judge in this case eileen can said it was too early to file this specific motion. And it was on the, it was, that motion was saying, because of the Presidential Records Act, this case can't move forward. The secondary issue, though, was just a couple days ago, remember the jury instructions, which are actually more important because I'm not sure these cases are going to get dismissed. Um, because again, like I just said, I think you're going to finally have a court going to, is at least going to weigh in to say whether or not this is uh, appropriate for the courts. And that's going to take more than probably just motions. Uh, but what she said was, uh, you know, what is the President Trump's team? What would you like in the jury instruction? Went to Jack Smith. What would you like in the jury instruction? None of these were final. And the Jack Smith and the prosecutors, they pitched a fit that President Trump was even allowed to put, uh, they even suggested to put the Presidential Records Act in, and specifically uh, that that would be a defense. And she responded within this denial to Jack Smith. And I think that's this is actually the most important part of this document. It's on page two. It says, uh, separately, to the extent the special counsel that Jack Smith demands an anticipatory finalization of jury instructions prior to trial, prior to a charge conference, prior to the presentation of trial defenses and evidence, the court declines that demand as unprecedented and unjust. The court's order soliciting preliminary draft instructions on certain counts should not be misconstrued as declaring a final definition on any essential element or asserted defense in this case. So basically, continuing that that move on Jack Smith is like, you complain and complain before decisions are even made. Yeah, we're You complain that, that. that people are putting, that people put information forward, that I even allow them to put information forward, not even that I'm accepting that information as something in the instruction, but that they're allowed to even make their own recommendations. I don't know if this is Jack Smith intentionally slowing things down because he now knows the time is against him and he can't get to Trump before the elections because of the the way that uh, the, the missteps he's had so, and some of the other issues, you know, like they've had in Georgia and the list goes on. Or uh, is this is this just a move to – he just wants to be in a fight with this judge. Let's go to Michael who's calling on line one who's watching on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube as well and you're brand new to this broadcast, I'm going to ask you to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Michael, you're on the air. Yeah, I just wanted to focus on Jack Smith, the empty indictments, the illegitimate indictments against Trump. I mean, if you want indictments, I handed presidential candidate General Wesley Clark war crimes indictments for bombing Yugoslavia. But President Trump hasn't done anything. It's all illegitimate, and he never committed an insurrection. But General Wesley Clark, he bombed Yugoslavia. They destroyed Yugoslavia, and yet yeah, Russia has attacked someone well, in Serbia. And- West Clark was a president. So he was getting instructions uh, as NATO's supreme commander, I think, at the time. Um, and so there's a, there's issues there. You're not gonna, you might not like their decisions, but they get immunity, too, from actions if they're following the orders correctly. But uh, presidents do as well. We talk, we have talked about this a lot. Um, again, the, the specifics on Yugoslavia, <laughs> not so much. I do get the point. The point, But, again, a president even has more immunity. Now, what they're alleging, though, is not that there's no actions taken here. They, they're saying, well, in this case, it was that you took documents you're not supposed to take. And if you do that, um, it can be criminal. And of course, there are people that have been prosecuted. There are people currently being prosecuted in the government for ha- taking classified documents. 
or even just mishandling classified documents. You can go to jail for that, Logan. You don't have to be, it doesn't even have to be that intentional. But when it comes to the president, they have the ultimate power around these documents. They're the only person who could literally have the most classified, important secret document in their possession and literally pull a random person off the street and read it to them. Yeah, and I think somewhat that's presidential and if power you can that, do you, that you would like. How can you ever really violate that law by having these documents? Yeah, I think that's the big debate. Is ha- and we also know that remember they didn't bring to, it against Joe Biden. Say, we all know that this happened to, to Joe Biden. Likely, this has happened to other presidents as well. They said, it, you know, listen, these are guys that one. There, you look at age. You look at the fact that it's a bunch of kids handling their boxes uh, when they when they are moving out of office. Thousands and thousands of documents. So if you tried to take this into court, most of the time a jury would say, "Sure." Well, if I had to hand, if I had to put myself in that position, and I had millions of these documents, and a week to get get them moved somewhere, and then also classify which ones need to go back to this person, which ones have to go back to this person, which ones have to go. Yeah, to this, it, it's, it's going to be. A mess. That doesn't seem very criminal. It's very different than the individual taking the one document to sell to the Russians. You know, I mean, that's different. That's a that's an easy crime. You can point that all the different crimes there, but when you have lots of these documents, you're sorting through, and you're, you've only been out of office for less than a year. People, I think, have a lot more sympathy to say, "I don't think this was like an intentional move to do anything wrong. This was just like a part of the issue of being president of the United yeah. States." Yeah, let's go to Jim, who's calling in South Carolina line two. Uh, Jim, you're on the air. There's been a lot of discussion around whether or not Jack Smith is legally appointed. You know, even Edward Meese, I guess. Express the opinion he's not. So I'd love your opinion on whether he's legally appointed, whether or not the money he's spending was properly appropriated. We've gone through the special counsels. You don't have to like it. It's a part of the, the law that's set up through the Department of Justice. It's different than an independent counsel. It's not like what Ken Starr was, and that they don't have that kind of authority. Uh, it's not congressional. So it's the Department of Justice, basically. The Attorney General can decide that a issue warrants someone's uh, specifically being appointed to this position that can act almost independently, though they are still serving the attorney general. They could actually technically be, I think, be fired by the president uh, uh, in that situation. That uh, they, they, again, they have their own budget. Usually they, they do have to get some of that approved. Uh, and, of course, they have to provide updates to the Department of Justice, usually to the deputy attorney general uh, that oversees, depending on. But I don't know of any situation in Jack Smith's situation. I think, again, charges that he's brought, the cases that he's brought, and if you look at his background as well uh, with the Department of Justice, uh, he's you know good at getting indictments, bad at getting convi- uh, convictions upheld. But I haven't seen any issues that you know that was in- inappropriate under the law. I don't like the issues of special counsel. I don't think that they should be necessary. I think we pay for an entire Department of Justice, and they should be able to carry out these jobs. But that is a, a part of the law. We have gotten rid of the independent counsel, which I think was a good move. But uh, special counsel still there. It's, it's a tool. Members is also a tool they use to protect themselves. Where Joe Biden could, where, and Merrick Garland could say, "See, we we put forward this special counsel to investigate the documents, so you can't say that it was us doing." 